Hey, what's going on everyone? Greg here. And while we just got finished with Apple's October iPhone event, marking two Apple events in a row, we aren't finished yet with possibly the most exciting Apple event coming to us in November, because this event, at least to me, is going to be the introduction of one of the most exciting Apple products and announcements of this year, the first Apple Silicon Max. But what can we realistically expect for this last minute, third November event? What date will Apple hold it on? And is it possible we could get a lineup of multiple Apple Silicon Macs at this event? Well, let's talk about it. I mean, why else are you here? Well, maybe you're here to actually follow me on Twitter. I should mention that I do have a Twitter. Uh, it's at Gregory McFadden, not at Greg's Gadgets. Someone else already owns that. So don't follow them. Follow at Gregory McFadden if you want to get even more status updates and early information and just some other random tidbits. The iPhones are releasing this week, so it's, it's a good time to go over to my Twitter and, and follow the G-Man. The G-Man. That's... That's what we're doing. Uh, so anyway, let's get into the video. So first of all, why three separate events? Why not pack everything into the October event we just had? Well, I think it actually might have to do with the fact that these events are now virtual, meaning that Apple doesn't have to invite members of the press to head over to their campus in Cupertino, and Apple doesn't have to prepare and rehearse a live event like they normally would have to. So right off the bat, because these events are virtual, it's much easier for Apple to just hold three separate events and stream the pre-recorded announcements. That way, each event can focus on specific details and not lose the message. Which is gonna be important for Apple Silicon Macs, as this is a pretty big moment for Apple computers. As for when Apple will hold this event, well, Nostradamus himself, John Prosser, who has a pretty accurate track record when it comes to predicting product dates and event dates, says that Apple's November R Mac event is scheduled for Tuesday, November 17th, and that Apple will confirm this with an announcement on November 10th. So this is a pretty late in the game event for Apple to have scheduled, but it looks like they are going ahead with a late November event. So what will Apple show off at this supposed November event? Well, I think you guys know, but according to Mark Gurman from Bloomberg, Apple will specifically be focusing on the launch of their first Apple Silicon MacBook, and Gurman says that we should see other products announced at this event as well, which could mean multiple Macs. A lot of us have been waiting for this announcement for years, and when Apple confirmed the transition at the Worldwide Developers Conference, they confirmed to us that they would be revealing the first Apple Silicon Mac before the end of this year. So all eyes are on Apple to see what they can do when they're in full control of the hardware, software, and design of this next generation of Macs. And the one Mac that is largely rumored to be at this event is an Apple Silicon MacBook Pro. Now, this is largely rumored to be the 13-inch version, and it will feature a very similar design to the current MacBook Pros, but it will be the first Apple product available with their own custom chipset and processors based on the ARM architecture, or again, as Apple calls it, Apple Silicon. Some of you will be disappointed based on these early rumors that the design is supposed to be largely unchanged, and while there's always the chance the rumors and leaks are wrong, I mean, it wouldn't be the first time, there might be a reason why Apple is keeping the same design as their previous iterations of the MacBook Pro. By keeping the design the same, Apple can focus on just the silicon and how much more of a power and energy advantage it will have over the same MacBook Pro that was running on the same Intel chipsets in the same exact design. That on its own is a powerful statement. And while a new design would be nice, and, and I do want one, the importance of these announcements really does all come down to the chip. And you should be excited because some of the early results of these processor gains are impressive. We know based on reports that the Apple Silicon Mac could feature 12 core processors based on the design of the A14 processor. Now, Apple won't just be slapping the A14 into these Macs like they did with the recent iPad Air. They will be making custom Mac chips based on the design of the A14. But even, even if we put our expectations at their lowest and say Apple is lazy and they aren't doing any sort of custom tuning to these Mac chips, which again, they will, 
The A14 on its own is already outscoring Intel-based Macs based on some of these early Geekbench scores we are seeing. And with no alteration, the single core score from this Geekbench 5 benchmark outscores any Mac that Apple currently sells on the market, even beating out the new desktop class 27 inch iMac and even the $6,000 Mac Pro in single core performance. Another important note is that this 12 core Mac processor will have eight performance cores and four energy saving cores. Apple chips for the iPhones and iPads have featured this dual strategy of having the fastest possible cores and then high efficiency cores. So they can switch off depending on how you're using your computer. So lower power cores would obviously help preserve battery life when doing less intensive tasks. Most specifically, I think for background activity for when your device is in sleep mode and for refreshing to check for things like notifications from apps like messages or mail. Then when it's actually turned on and you're doing something performance intensive, like editing a video in Final Cut Pro 10, well then it can switch to those eight other high performance cores. Furthermore, it's largely speculated that Apple will also be using its own graphics for these first batches of Apple Silicon Macs. And although these will be integrated graphics cards, if we're just going off those leaked Geekbench scores on that A14, we can see some super impressive results, not only for the CPU side, but in the graphics department as well. This is no surprise when you consider how much power Apple packs into the slim footprint of the iPad Pro, but I'm just trying to think of Apple tuning this even more for their Macs, and maybe these integrated graphics cards might actually be decent for gaming? On top of that, we know that Apple Silicon in products like the iPad require significantly less wattage than what we are used to seeing in products like the MacBook Pro. A custom tuned Apple Silicon Mac chip would be able to not only keep the edge on performance, but also put off less heat and let's say goodbye to bad Mac thermals. On top of all that, we could see battery gains of anywhere from 50 to 100% according to analysts like Ming-Chi Kuo. So while I expect a majority of the event to focus on this Apple Silicon based 13 inch MacBook Pro and most of these announcements to really just compare how much better Apple Silicon is in in terms of performance and energy usage compared to the old Intel based MacBook Pro, I also think like German that Apple might show off more than just one product at this event. And because Apple is packing this into one dedicated event, I think we will also see our first desktop class Mac running on Apple Silicon in the form of a redesigned 24 inch iMac. In fact, if we trace back our leaks and rumors, we can see Quo saying that Apple is planning to launch a 24 inch iMac in the fourth quarter of 2020, lining up very nicely with this November event. Also, if you look at the last iMac update, you'll notice that only the 27 inch iMac received a refresh with the processor and graphics card options. And in the 21.5 inch, that basically remained the same, hinting that Apple would be refreshing the 21 inch iMac with a complete replacement sooner rather than later. This iMac, unlike the previous iterations we've seen since 2012, would sport a brand new redesign. This design is largely speculated to be based off similar designs to the iPad Pro and the new iPhone 12 with flatter squared off edges. And like the Pro Display XDR, feature slimmer bezels. And honestly, I'm more excited for a new iMac than I am a MacBook Pro because here is where Apple can really show what it's capable of in their processor division. Because desktop computers like iMacs don't have to follow the constraint of a typical mobile device, a mobile device that is limited by its battery. And Apple could up the processor power draw, add even more cores and engineer a better cooling solution than what they would be able to do inside the limits of a constrained body like a laptop. And let's be honest, it's just been so long since they've refreshed the iMac that any sort of design change is a lot more exciting than what I think they would do with their next version of a MacBook. Either way, with the power and efficiency of the A14 processor, as well as the potential for the first new desktop iMac redesign since 2012, I think this last and final Apple November event is going to be the most interesting one yet, and I can't wait to see how Apple introduces us to the first Apple Silicon Mac. But anyway, 
That's what we know about Apple's last and final November event and what we can expect to be there. Please, if you like this video, then be sure to leave me a like. If you wanna see more from my channel, including future coverage of this event, well, make sure you're subscribed. If you wanna help the channel out in any way, make sure you check out some of the affiliate links in the description below. And as always, thank you so much for watching and I will see you all in the next video. Take care, everyone.